Alien entities, what are they? What does that mean? In this series of teachings, Dr. Lester Sumrall talks about the spiritual aspects of people with multiple personalities and those plagued with clinical depression. He also shares how the church should have the answers to any human problem, including alien entities. Stay tuned for this fascinating series that teaches people how Jesus Christ can set people free. Thank you and God bless you. It is very important to know something. Uh, when one does not have sufficient knowledge, whether it's a mechanic on a car, if he doesn't have sufficient knowledge, he's a danger to the car. And, and uh, when we do not have sufficient knowledge about the world of spirit, uh, we're, we're a danger in that operation. And the purpose of these classes will be to illuminate and, and to teach and to assist and to help and to encourage and that faith may leap up within us. that We can say, I will help set others free. And if we will do that, God will use us. I am certain of it. Alien entities means that there are, there are entities or living creatures, living personalities that are not human, that have no relationship to the human way of life, uh, have come to hurt immortal souls, uh, human beings, and that we are set against them to seek to destroy them and their influence and, and that we set our fellow human beings free from anything that's alien to their personality. And lesson 21 in your teaching syllabus or page 86, uh, we have a, a, a very important lesson that really needs a lot of consideration. I have found that when I did not nourish and help the person that was set free, they did not stay free. And setting people free is one thing. Keeping them free is a bigger thing. Uh, I maybe shouldn't say bigger, but it is a very important thing to teach a person how to stay free once they have been set free. In the Gospel according to Luke chapter 11, verse 24, the Lord Jesus Christ told the story that when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man and walketh through dry places seeking rest, now, you have to evaluate the truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is given, that when an alien entity is put out of a human being, that he, he looks for another place to live. He looks for another body to live in and, and, and to seek rest there. And when he doesn't find another body to reside in or to possess, then he says, I will return unto my house. And now, now you should <laughs> underline that. Uh, he, he calls the person he has been living in his house, uh, his, his house. And, and so uh, uh, we don't want to become the house where alien spirits dwell in, you see. I'll go back to my house from whence I came out. Now there, there's an amazing a revolution taking place in a person who is delivered from an alien entity. A new world has come upon them. A, a new vista is open before them. They're free. They're no lady domin no longer uh, dominated by uh, a malignant thing that, that seeks to destroy them and to eat them up on their insides. They are they're free. And for some of them, it has been many years since they have known freedom. The witch doctor in Brazil, he had been even a witch doctor for 40 years. And when he began to breathe fresh air, when he began to see the world as God sees it, what, a, what an exhilaration came to him uh, that he had... He had come into an area of freedom that he hadn't, he had never known it because he had been possessed since he was a child. And, and so a new world of joy and peace opens up to such a one. He or she becomes normal in their thinking. That's very important. And, and also in their acting. 
However, they must respond to spiritual growth. I would underline those words if I were you. Anyone that is set free and does not respond to spiritual growth, I cannot believe that person to remain and to retain uh, his freedom that God has granted to him. Our Lord Jesus said, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Uh, you cannot receive a great miracle from God or, or a great deliverance from God and go right back and live the same kind of life you lived before. The Lord Jesus said, when you are set free, stop your sinning. And if you don't, he says, then a worse thing is bound to come upon you. That means that thing can come back and, and can hurt you. One of the dramatic changes of what happens to a human person who has been delivered from a foreign, non-human person and restored to normalcy and, and to a former dignity and prosperity and propriety uh, is recorded in the book of Daniel, uh, where Daniel the prophet wrote it. In chapter 4, verses 28 uh, through 37, uh, uh, here was a king on his throne that he sinned and, and said, look at this great Babylon that I have made and so forth, and God was angry at him and he sent him in, in, into, a, in, into a state of, of, uh, of, of insanity where he went and lived with the wild animals for seven years. At verse 29 begins, at the end of 12 months he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spoke and said, is this not the great Babylon that I have built for the house of, my, of the kingdom by the might and my power, he exalted himself. And for the honor of my majesty, only himself. While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. Seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. What a colossal lesson that humanity ought to hear. God put these truths in the Bible for us to understand them. God can do the same today. If you know it, say amen. amen. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and, and did eat grass as an oxen. He was so crazy until they, nobody could stay around him. He was so much like an animal that no one could stay with him. <coughs> his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his ha hairs were grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like a bird's claws. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes into heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. He was an insane person with an alien entity, and his mind was restored to him. And I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will, and the armies of heaven, and in the army of heaven, and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say, What doest thou? At the same time that my re reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. Isn't that amazing? That honor and brightness is a gift from God when one has it. And my counselors and my lords sought after me. They sought after him. I was established in my kingdom. An excellent majesty was added to me. Now, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the God of heaven, all whose works are true, and all his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Now, this is a tremendous example of a reaction that can come to, the, on this occasion, a monarch uh, who had his mind restored when he had been an imbecile for seven years. He had lived with the wild animals. He had eaten grass with his mouth down to the ground like an animal. The Bible says like an oxen. And this man that after seven years of insanity, the devils were put out of him and cast forth from him, and he was completely restored. He gave deep praises to the God of heaven, which was the Jehovah God of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so we, we find that here's a person that uh, when he was delivered, that he gave himself not to praising uh, heathen deities and, and, and gods made of silver and gold and stone and so forth, but in magnifying God, he says, I will praise and extol and honor 
the King of heaven, all whose works are true, his ways, his judgment, and those that walk in pride shall he abase. So we have a witness of a man that after he was delivered, he had the right attitude toward God. He had the correct attitude toward God. He gave God the honor that he sh should have. We find here in, in a very opposite illustration from that in 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 9. It begins by saying, and it was so that when Saul, who became king, had turned his back to go from Samuel, that God gave him another heart. God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. Here we have a person. Here we have a person. Are we all on page 87 together? Uh, I hope I don't have another book from you tonight like I had the other day. <clears throat> that the Bible says that King Saul had a changed heart. The Bible says he prophesied before the Lord. However, he volitionally disobeyed the recorded will of God. He, he hated without a cause. He sought to kill innocent persons without a cause. And what happened to him is in 1 Samuel 16 and 14, and, and, and Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubleth him. Now, that does not mean that God sent an evil spirit upon him. It means that evil spirit was there all the time, and God released the protecting powers that had separated him from it. At, that God had been the one that was keeping back these things from hurting him. And when he hated God, turned against God, uh, revolted against God, God released his hand. God only knows what would happen to any of us if the hand of God was released from us. That we live under a protection. God only knows the, the terrible accidents that we're almost in and the angels of God keep making a way for us. And if that was withheld from us, then the devil would hold a high court and do as he please. We're going to live under the shelter of the Almighty until we see him face to face. And so here's a king that went the other way. He'd had the good thing given to him, but in the end, he gave himself to an evil thing, to an alien entity. While the other king had, the, had that pride in his heart and was lifted up within himself, and, and when, when the judgment of God came against him, he turned back to God with the right kind of a heart and the right kind of a spirit. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 12, and verse 43, it says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of the man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and seeking none. And uh, it was the Lord Jesus Christ who reported the story. And uh, we, we read you some of it there in, in the beginning of the lesson. And then the, the spirit says, I will, I, I will return to my house from whence I came, came out. And, and when he came, he findeth it uh, empty and swept and garnished. That's on page 88. Verse 45, and then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And he and the last state of that man is worse than than the first state. Now, now uh, let's go through that and look at it real carefully. Here was a man who was simply possessed of an alien entity. One spirit was in him. And the Lord Jesus said that that spirit had been cast forth out of that man, and he was free. He was a free man. And then the Word says that, this, that that spirit went through a wilderness where persons do not live, and, and uh, seeking someone to possess, but he didn't find any. Then the alien spirit said, I'd like to go back because I find no rest here. I find no person to, that I can ma manipulate. Uh, here, and, and then I will return. And so when he had found no accommodation in that empty area, he returned. He said, I will return to my house from whence I came and, and called this his former abode, his house. He found the former residence and he found it empty. 
uh, he didn't need to be empty. When God does anything for you, if you'll fill your heart with praises, if you'll fill your person with praises, the devil won't have room to get back in. If you'll fill your life with a word, the devil won't be able to get back in. But he found him empty, not full of the Spirit of the Lord. He found him swept. The bad things had been cleared out. God had cleared them out. And so here he was, empty. And, and that's one thing that I, I seek to do, you know, I, I might say all the time. is it, not just to bring you to a place of confession, say, confess your sins. And get rid of your sins. To get rid of your sins is not enough. We want you to get full of Jesus. Yeah. To, to empty you of bad things is not sufficient. Uh, stop smoking, stop drinking, stop all the, that is not enough. To get you full of something is exceedingly important. And, and when we don't realize that, many people will not follow after Jesus for the simple reason they haven't been taught that when they're emptied of something, then they must be filled with something. Can you say amen? amen? He found him empty. He found him swept. The bad things had been cleared out. He found him garnished or decorated. The man had religion. He had a ceremony, but he had no, no spiritual life. God was not there. It is so easy to, to have a Sunday morning church religion and not have any spiritual authority and any spiritual strength and any spiritual joy. It's, uh, it's easy to have religion and not have Jesus. And we must never, we must never permit ourselves to get in such a, such a situation. And so the evil entity returned to look into the situation. He discovered there was a possibility of his returning. So for security, he invited eight or seven other spirits. Uh, this would be a, a great subject for you to, 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 to study. No alien entity can do two things as far as we know. If it is a spirit of deafness, he, 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 cannot, he cannot put a spirit of blindness in you. He has to go and get another spirit that's designated for that kind of thing, and so there has to be two of them there. And so uh, this one that was come back can, could not come back and say, I'm going to do seven kinds of things in here now. He had to bring seven others to do the other seven kinds of things. So for security, he invited other spirits who had no man to possess either. There are millions of these fallen angels that came when, when Lucifer was cast out of heaven. And they formed a league together. And all eight would possess this one man. In verse 45, it says that these seven spirits were more wicked than the first spirit. Now, you have to believe what the Bible says. I put a little line under there. There are spirits more wicked than other spirits. And, and that is a true thing. One can be possessed of one kind of a spirit, and he can get, have another kind of a spirit that will make him more wicked than the other, than the first kind of a spirit. There are, there are wicked spirits more wicked than other wicked spirits. This reveals that Christ teaches that there are degrees of wickedness in alien entities. Christ also taught that they, they all entered into that one man, and that they dwell there, and they made themselves at home there, and one person can have multiple entities. That will answer a lot of questions when you're out there. People will say, well, how can there be more than one inside of a person? And you give them the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and, and that will solve that will solve the problem completely. Every rational person should thank God for his sanity. Can you say amen? amen? When any person receives a miracle of restoration from Jesus, he has a direct responsibility of appreciation to live a life pleasing to God and to Christ. That man that told Jesus about, that, that man that Jesus told about had missed the mark in his personal life. Now, the Bible teaches us in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, don't be drunk on wine, for it is excess. Be filled with the Spirit. The Bible teaches us very carefully that, uh, that bitter waters and sweet waters can't come out of the same fountain. And if you're full of God, you're not full of evil. And anybody that wants to tell you otherwise, they're wrong. You cannot be full of God and full of evil at the same time. 
that the, the, Jesus said that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So you can't have half good and half evil and them in there fighting. That is not true. Either you have Jesus Christ in your heart or you don't. And if you have Christ in your heart, you have power and authority to cast out evil entities. If you know it, say amen. amen. Now, a further uh, story that Jesus gave us regarding what happens to a person when an entity is cast from them, and maybe this is the greatest one in the Bible, is found in Mark uh, chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. This amazing story is spoken of, I guess, more than any other story in the Bible related to uh, alien entities. It says that the group of the disciples and Jesus, that they came over to the other side of the little Sea of Galilee into the country of the Gadarenes. That's over on the eastern side uh, at toward the south part of the, of the Sea of Galilee. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. So he did have an alien entity who had his dwelling among the tombs. He didn't live with, with people. He lived, he lived in, the, in the cemeteries. And no man could bind him. They had tried and failed, not with even with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. They tried giving him some lessons in psychology, I suppose, but they couldn't tame him. <laughs> Verse 5 says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains, he was in the tombs, crying, I mean, screaming out, and he would cut himself with stones, and blood would squirt out of it, off of his body. But, verse 6, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I do to, to do with you, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Uh, there's a lot of uh, biblical doctrine in that verse 7. Uh, he cried with a loud voice, and this is what he said, What have I to do with thee? You know, he was so different. He, he, he knew that he had no place in God. He said, Jesus, uh, thou Son of the Most High God, he recognized his position. He recognized his sonship even. Can you imagine that? Now, he, he was thrown out of the heavens, but possibly before the world was made here, uh, in, in, in a time before the, the world was made. And this, this spirit recognized him as the son of the most high God, the only begotten son that Jesus speaks about in, in John chapter 3. Then he says, I sure adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. He recognized that Jesus Christ had the authority to do anything he wanted to do with him, and he had now met him face to face. And then verse 8, For Jesus had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is your name? And the man replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much. Imagine the evil spirit pleading with Jesus that he would not send him away out of the country, that is, tell him to go into uh, the void of space or in an un un uninhabited areas. Now, there was nigh under the mountain a great herd of swine following. These, these, were, not, these were not Jews. They wouldn't have had a, a herd of swine. The capitalists was made up of ten towns, and, and they were non-Jewish non people. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us unto the swine, that we may enter them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out of that man, and they entered into the pigs, and the herd of hogs, or pigs, ran balloted down a steep place into the sea, and there were about 2,000 of them, and they were choked in the, in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled into the city and in the country, and they went out to see what was done. Uh, uh, that, what was done. And as they came to Jesus, and to see him that was possessed with the devil, that had the legion sitting, you ought to put a line there. Sitting, he was no longer running and dancing and jumping and and frantic. He was sitting, clothed. He, he had been naked. They gave him clothes, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Isn't that amazing? 
see the power of God and get scared about it. And, and they, they that saw it told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil and concerning him. And they began to pray for him to depart out of the coast. And when he was coming to the ship, uh, that he that was possessed with the devil prayed him that he might go with him. And Jesus suffered him not, but said, go to your friends. He said, no, go home and then to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee. And he departed and began to publish in the capitalist how great things that Jesus had done for him. All right? Now, let's, let's, let's follow that up a little. In Matthew 4, 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from Decapolis. Now, that's where the man lived. From Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. And in Mark 5 and 13, for, as many, for, for forthwith Jesus gave them leave that the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and so forth and choked them in the sea. The delivered man was healed. He wanted to follow Jesus. And the man was sent back to his own people to witness and to testify. And Jesus wouldn't suffer him to go with him. And, and so he departed from Decapolis and told them how great things Jesus had done. So it's the same area. In Mark 7, again, when departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, Jesus came to the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. He's right back there again. And multitudes were ready to receive him. They changed their mind. They told him to leave. Now they told him to come back. And even though the people had asked Jesus to depart their country, they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And, and so uh, here he had 4,000 people together in Mark 8. And in those, in those days of multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus calls his disciples. And there you have the story where he fed 5,000 people after teaching them for three days. And they had been gathered by the man that was crazy <laughs> and made well by the power of God. Now, that is one of the greatest stories in the Bible, and very few people ever follow it up. What happened to him? Now, what happens to people who were set free? The invisible boy was working for a, a film company in Manila, and uh, he helped make the film The Invisible Boy. He had a wife and two children, were very happy, and, and came to church there at the Bethel Temple Church. Uh, the girl uh, came to church with us. She married a farmer. Uh, she had uh, two children, and the farmer told me that he'd seen nothing wrong with her whatsoever. And, and so uh, we need to not only see people set free, we should see what happens to them after they are set free. And you that set them free have an obligation to them that you teach them the word of the Lord on how to stay free. I hope that you've been enlightened by today's teaching series by my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall. So many people have been blessed by his teachings on God's Word. If you are one of those people, I would love to hear from you. Write me at the address on the screen. I am Peter Sumrall, and thank you for watching and supporting LaCie Broadcasting.